So let's talk about the problem of identifiability in regression models. So in general, a model is said to be identifiable if its parameters can be estimated uniquely. In other words, when you specify different values of your parameters, you in fact get different models. So we can sometimes have a problem with unidentifiability or non-identifiability in regression models. And from our normal equations, we know that uh, our least squares estimator was the solution to the normal equations x transpose x beta hat equals x transpose y, where x was our n minus p matrix of predictors or regressors. But if x transpose x is singular and cannot be inverted, it actually doesn't mean there's no solution to the normal equations. It actually means there's infinitely many solutions to the normal equations. And so different parameter values can actually result in the exact same model, which means I wouldn't really know what the model is even if I estimated the parameters. So unidentifiability occurs when x, our x matrix, does not have full rank. And by full rank, what that means is that the columns of x are linearly dependent. One call, at least one column in x is a linear combination of the other columns in x. So having a problem with unidentifiability is very rare for observational data, but it does happen a lot more frequently with experiments. But observational data is usually caused by doing something kind of silly with the data. So for example, you might have a person's weight measured in both pounds and kilos. And there's a one-to-one -one relationship between those two variables where you just have to multiply by the right constant to get the other one. So they're a linear combination of one another. We might record the number of years of pre-university education, university education, and total education. So total education is just the sum of the other two variables, and so they're once again linear combinations of each other. You can also have a problem with, uh, with unidentifiability if you have more variables than observations. So if the number of regressors is equal to n, you have what is known as a saturated model. And when the number of regressors is greater than n, you have a super saturated model. And you cannot uniquely estimate your parameters. And this may seem like a problem that is unrealistic, but in fact, with genetic data, this is actually really common. And so for one person, you can measure thousands and thousands of genetic variations and their genetics and things related to their genetic structure. And so we have lots and lots of measurement, measurements on each individual person's. But you usually don't have that many observations. You don't have that many people you've made measurements on. And so this is actually a real problem with genetic data. So how do you resolve this problem? Well, in general, you should just remove one or more of the linearly dependent columns. So if some of the, col the columns are linear combinations of one another, you just remove the offending columns until there's no problem with linear dependence. But let's talk more about this issue for designed experiments. So let's say that we have a two-sample experiment. So basically that means that we have two different groups that each receive a different treatment. We'll let the first group be denoted by y1 to yn, or at least the responses for the first group are y1 to yn, and the responses for the controls, the second set of observations, are yn plus 1 to yn plus m. So we have n observations in the first group and m observations in the second group. So let's say we assume there's an overall mean effect for the responses in both groups. We'll call that mu. And then there's effects related to which treatment the observation received. We'll call those alpha 1 and alpha 2. And so what we think is that observation j is equal to a mean plus an effect for treatment i plus an error for each particular observation. i goes from 1 to 2 and j goes from 1 to m plus n. And if we wrote this using matrix notation, we'd have our column of responses, y1 down to yn plus n. We'd have our column of ones related to the intercept, and then the first n observations for the second column would be a 1, whereas the, and then the remaining m observations would have a 0, and then the third column would have n zeros for the, in the first part, and then m1s for the second part. And we'd multiply that by the parameter vector mu, alpha 1, alpha 2, and then we have our m plus n dimensional vector of errors. And if you look closely at this formula, you realize that the column of ones is just a linear combination of the other two columns. It's just the sum of them. And so we have a problem with linear dependence. And so x only has rank 2. Our model is not identifiable, and our normal equations would have infinitely many solutions. And so this is a problem for experimental data, but not so much for observational data. 
And so in this case, we actually just wouldn't need this last column, most likely. Um, so what you do in practice to solve this for designed experiments is you impose some constraints on your parameters. So you might set one of the parameters equal to zero. So you might say that alpha one equals zero. This is known as the set to zero or corner constraint. Or you might say that their sum equals zero. So alpha one plus alpha two equals zero. And that's known as the sum to zero constraint. And R actually has an, an automatic approach for dealing with this issue. So R tries to find the largest identifiable model by removing variables in reverse order of appearance in the model formula. So when we write out these regression models in R, it removes the last variable to see if that cor corrects the problem. If it doesn't, then it removes the last two variables and so on, and it keeps removing variables until eventually uh, there's no problem with collinearity. So let's look at an example of this unidentifiability problem. So what we're going to do is for our Galapagos data set, we are going to, going to create a new variable, a diff. And a diff is just the difference between area and adjacent. So it's very clear here that a diff is a linear combination of the other two columns. And so when we fit this model, we should have a problem with unidentifiability because our X matrix does not have full rank. So the X matrix will have seven columns, but it will only have column rank six. Okay, so here we are. We're creating our a diff variable in R. So gala a diff is the difference between gala area and gala adjacent. We fit our linear model that has all the previous variables as well as a diff. Okay, so we're actually adding this variable we know is a linear combination of the others. And when I look at a summary of my linear model, you can see here that for a diff, it says that there is a problem. So it just gives NAs. Because basically what it did was it removed, because there was a linear, there's a problem with linear common linear dependence among the columns of your X matrix, it just removed a diff since it was the last variable that was added in our regression formula. You can also have a problem where a model is close to unidentifiable. So let's say that instead of having a diff be an exact linear combination of the other so of two of the other columns of our X matrix, we're going to say it's the difference of those two variables plus a little bit of error. And so we're going to generate a diff E, which was a diff, and we're just going to add a little bit of random error to each observation. And then we'll refit the model with all the previous regressors as well as a diff E. And let's see what happens when we do that. So you can see that we were able to estimate the model now. We didn't have any problems with singularities or anything like that. So we were able to get to fit the model uniquely because our X matrix had full rank. But if you notice here, uh, the area adjacent and A diff E variables have really large estimated numbers and the standard error is extremely large as well. And so this is a problem that you have with models that are close to not identifiable is that if columns of your X matrix are approximately linearly dependent or close to have are close to linearly dependent, then the standard error of the associated regression coefficients is going to be really large and the estimated regression coefficients are not going to be trustworthy.